Humanists have always sought after understanding and, and knowledge of the world around them, its historical and its cultural record, and there's a long tradition of them using the latest technologies to do that, whether that's the invention of movable type, um, advances in communication networks, and digital humanists now are using the affordances of digital technology to continue that study. The challenges that we're dealing with in research, the challenges we're dealing with on the planet, are multidisciplinary. Uh, so I see barriers coming down and not just disciplines coming together, which I, go, I suppose digital and humanities is part of that, um, but really the emergence of new disciplines entirely. And I don't think we'll just be talking in terms of disciplines. I already have a lot of trouble when people ask me what discipline I am. I have no idea. One of the strengths of digital humanities is that you can invite people from different disciplines to participate and really kind of start a, an interesting and informed dialogue. These sorts of projects are very unique and you can't achieve them without lots of different departments within the university. So for example, I, I work very closely with um, special collections here at the Bodleian. If I want to do some monitoring of how interested people are in this particular project, I would then go and talk to colleagues in the Oxford Internet Institute. If I want some specific advice on crowdsourcing, there's some really great tailor-made courses that are put on by IT services. And similarly with uh, you know, IT development, there's a lot of people who've worked on a broad range of um, digital projects across Oxford. Digital tools and technologies can help you answer research questions about texts, about images, about music, uh, all sorts of humanities subjects by allowing you to collect together a whole bunch of data which you can then query or analyse in a variety of ways. Now that can just be the fact that they can simultaneously read uh, digital editions of a particular text that's scattered across the world but they can read it all at their desk. There are people using imaging technologies to read texts that are illegible to the human eye. Um, they use multispectral and hyperspectral imaging to read texts on papyri. There are also projects that bring together a lot of metadata, which is the, the descriptions of the data, into one place. And that used to just be the way that people found their real research objects. And what we're seeing now is people doing digital humanities projects on that metadata. So maybe the objects themselves haven't been digitized, but you have information about those objects. So what kinds of things can you find out? The digital technology opens new possibilities of, much like in the medieval reality, of annotating text together, of working together, and also of breaking away from the narrative sequence of print. Because in printed books, you have a beginning and you have an end. In some manuscript books, and much like the digital technology, you don't need to do that anymore. You can start at one point and go to the other. You don't need it to be linear anymore. And I think that's a, an interesting direction of digital technology to take. And digital humanities is often credited to Father Roberto Busa, and he was a monk, creating a word index to all of Thomas Aquinas' work. He was doing this the old-fashioned way on index cards. He approached IBM and said there has to be a way to use computers to do this better. It took him 15 years, I think, to release the first version and still online to this day. That is, to me, what digital humanities is about, using technology to do something possibly faster and possibly at a bigger scale than you could do otherwise. As time goes on, inevitably, research is going to be more automated. And I think it's essential that um, we don't um, just hand over the research to the computers and say, get on with the research, but we actually keep the humans in the loop. And actually, this is where humanities scholars are really, really good at asking critical questions. Digital humanities is a real asset to someone developing a career because they're going to still have the, all the skills that they develop in their individual disciplines. But on top of that, they're going to have um, knowledge and experience of a greater range of techniques and methods and really they're just going to be a more rounded and uh, more investable individual in the research community.